Greet then lads and lasses, how we're doing and welcome back to the channel. Straight off the bat, just look at the background man. I love it me, we've got my favourite player, we've got a scarf of him, we've got a cup, we've got a cup holder, absolutely everything. But that is just fantastic in itself, isn't it? But in today's video, in today's early video, shall I say, I'll probably be posting another one today, so a double upload today. We've got four injury news from players as Eddie Howe spoke to the media today in a press conference. And should we recall Jan Kubermente, who unfortunately is out with a muscle injury right now, but he's been absolutely fantastic for Feyenoord this season. I mean, Champions League, the Johan Cruyff Cup, Eredivisie, he's been unreal. But let's take a look at who we should suspect should be back soon and sooner rather than later and hopefully some of these players can get back soon let's get into the injury update now we'll start off with callum wilson unfortunately he remains a doubt for bournemouth and for england now this just screams an absolute downfall for me if we don't have a striker anthony gordon's gonna have to play striker and look i don't not back anthony gordon playing striker but we've seen him play there recently because of our squad depth and he hasn't been that great, has he? I mean, he's much more effective on the wing where he can actually take on a man. It's striker. He's not the lethal finisher, as we know. Of course, he can put the ball in the back of the net. We've seen that four times this season. But he's not the absolute lethal striker or more of a lethal striker than Alexander Isak and Callum Wilson is. But yes, Callum Wilson is a doubt for Bournemouth and for England. If he's a doubt for England, why on earth he got picked for them? I do not know. There's many other English strikers. And Callum Wilson's never been... Uh, High profile to be named for England. Of course, he has uh, his time at Bournemouth. He's been picked with us once before. But why now? When he's in China, it just it doesn't make any sense. Gareth Southgate's team selections are absolutely beyond me. He's got tests on. Yes, you guessed it. He's tight hamstrings today. They are built of Legos, them, honestly. But Harvey Barnes is also on track for a return in December. He's another player we need in, in involving Anthony Gordon again. I mean, that man has played, what was it, six games in 17 days, I believe it is. That is unbelievable. Champions League, AFL Cup, Premier League. It's unbelievable out of football. And no matter how much of an athlete you are, your muscles are going to get fatigued, especially when you're a player like Anthony Gordon. I mean, he's just absolutely fanatic about winning the ball back, isn't he? He loves the fans. He loves getting them riled up. And when you have a player like that, he needs to rest. It's simple as it doesn't matter how much money he's on. He needs to rest. And another unfortunate in Sven Botman is there is no return date for his knee injury. He has been in Holland, though, getting a specialist treatment, I do believe it was. We've seen some clips of him on the train, uh, on the plane, sorry, from some fans. Hopefully he gets better yet again. I believe he's one of our most important players in the team. He's definitely one of the most talented in the team. I mean, him for £30 million. Jesus Christ, what a player he is. He's a ball-playing defender. He's massive. His tackling is unbelievable. He's... He is probably going to be, I'll say this now, he's probably going to be one of the best centre-backs in the world if he fulfills his potential. If not, if his injuries get the best of him, we'll never know. But we are so lucky to have him at the club. What a return he's going to be when he comes back. Hopefully, fingers crossed, he can be back for PSG and we can give it our all in that game because we need to succeed in this Champions League. Let's be real, it's either Champions League or Europa League. Hopefully, we can still stay in Europe, but... If we have him, it's it's a fantastic boost. Eddie Howe also dropped a hint on Alexander Isak saying that he could be back post an international break yet again. I'm just going to say it again. If we don't have Callum Wilson at Alexander Isak, it's not looking great because then Gordon will have to go on a striker. Who's going to go on the wings? Miguel Almiron and who? It doesn't look great. Probably Tino Livermento or even Matt Ritchie at this rate. But look, in terms of the Bournemouth game, I said in my match preview, it's one last push in the Premier League. Just give it all. With the players we've got, they're just going to have to give 110% like they never have before. Get through this last one. It's the international break. Every single player can rest, of course, if they're not having international duties with their respective countries. Give it your all. Rest, international break. Take it lightly. Get back on focus to Newcastle United and we're all okay. Get on that PSG game and fingers crossed we can get something out of it. Now, like I've just stated before, Jan Kovaventa can come back on loan from Feyenoord where unfortunately it's a, it's not a surprise that he is also injured. He's muscle injured over in Feyenoord. I mean, he's been on fire for them this season, not just because of goals and assists, but his actual performances as well. He's been unbelievable. I believe his first goal he actually took around the keeper and just slapped it in the net. Nine games played for him in the Eredivisie, three goals and one assist. He looks on fire and... If we can nurture him at Newcastle United while we've got a few injury problems, get him in the team, get him while there's not so much competition with injuries, of course, unfortunately, and he can probably become a star. Maybe in the next transfer window, not the one coming up, we'll send him back out on loan to a place where he's going to succeed. Not the Championship, not the Scottish League. These never do anything for players. He's also made one appearance in the Johan Cruyff Cup and two in the Champions League. And also what's fantastic about Jan Kovaminta, when I uploaded a video of him, I think it was about a month ago now, it's got like 25,000 views, I believe it is. And most of them are Gambian supporters. I mean, that just shows how much of a talent this lad is. The whole of Gambia is backing him up, wherever it is. Just go and look at how many Gambian supporters he has in the comments. They know they've got a talent on their hands. And it's like them sort of one player... Countries, not he's not a renowned superstar yet, but trust me, he will be. 
who else is a, is a thing? I guess Miggy in Paraguay is a kind of example for them. Uh, Alexander Isak in Sweden. I mean, they're more of a high profile football and country, aren't they? But Alexander Isak is miles ahead of anyone in there. Now, you let me know if you would recall Jan Kubermenta back. Yes, of course, in my opinion, he's an extra player to play. We're injury ridden. It's a no brainer for me. Of course, he can kind of develop over there in the Dutch league for me and the Belgian league or two leagues I've always liked for players to go out on loan so in my opinion recall them back but you let me know yours I've also created a start 11 for Bournemouth tomorrow and it's just not our best whatsoever is it I mean the thing is as well it's unlucky for players like Harvey Barnes, Elliot Anderson who respectively aren't the first names on the team sheet who would be playing now but they're injured it's just a big shame let's take a look at the start 11 that I've crafted up now in goal no question about it people have said Debravka should have come back a few weeks ago absolutely not in my opinion Nick Pope's done not so much wrong in the Premier League that is so Nick Pope in goal right back Tino Livermento in the past couple of games I think he's been our best player in the what past two three games he's been unbelievable he's stepped up at the plate his one-on-one -on -one tackling is unbelievable for a 20 year old and he's also just got called up to the England and under 21 squad so fair play to him he deserves it he deserves the men's squad now Jordan there's so much competition for England's senior men's right back it's it's unbelievable but right center back and left center back you've guessed it Jamal Lascelles and Fabian Shaw left back Kieran Trippier I mean that back four in itself have been absolutely overrun with games maybe not Tino Livermento but them three have been overrun with games right center mid we're gonna go it's it's a toss-up between Sean Longstaff Joe Willock and Joe Linton who all get into the team but we're gonna put Joe Willock on the left in the middle we'll go Sean Longstaff and on the right we'll go Joe Linton of course they can chop and change I'd more so rather Joe Willock on the left because obviously you can chop and change with left wing and left centre mid right wing Miggy Almiron I mean he can run for days he's probably our best sort of player in the right wing area I know Tino Livermento can play there but I'd much rather him play left back and Almiron play right wing Mr Anthony Gordon up front I don't know why I say that every time I say Anthony Gordon but Anthony Gordon up front and left wing young Lewis Hall we need to utilize these young players they need to give us everything they can and by all means are they just doing that so let me know your thoughts on the video if you would change any of them players I've just named in the start 11 if you would recall Jan Kubermenta on loan you let me know in the comments this is an early upload the first time in a very long time I've done an early upload Thank you very much for watching. I've been Jordy Josh. If you did enjoy this video, hit the like button. If you haven't already and you're new, hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Jordy Josh. Go and enjoy your day.